Before we get started, I'd really like to apologize for this TED Talk. I'm so sorry. I wanted it to be great, but it's only going to be okay. So I want you to start out thinking with me about what the people behind me have in common. So that's, in case you weren't sure, Beatles songwriter Paul McCartney, musical theater songwriter Stephen Sondheim, Star Trek II co-writers Jack Sowards and Harv Bennett, and there's not a picture of it here, but every good academic student ever. <laughs> and that is that they're all willing to rewrite, which is really what my presentation is about. So, it may surprise you to know that the Beatles classic, Eleanor Rigby, started out Miss Daisy Hawkins. Maybe it would have been <laughs> as big a hit, maybe not. Also, the 1962 musical written by Stephen Sondheim, uh, Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Forum, started out originally with an opening number called Forget War, then that was replaced by another opening number called Love is in the Air. And with either of those, it almost closed out of town. And what that means is it was in Philadelphia or Detroit, playing somewhere before reaching Broadway, and almost was told to close before it even got to open on Broadway. Fortunately, he wrote a third opening number, Comedy Tonight, and as a result, Forum was incredibly successful on Broadway and is still being performed around the world, even right now. Um, as far as Star Trek II, uh, Spock's death scene originally occurs in the first 10 minutes before wisely being moved to the last 10 minutes. Now, the movie came out in 1982, but I'm really sorry if I spoiled it for you anyway. <laughs> and likewise, student essays, even the really good ones, often start out as one long, horrible paragraph full of miscapitalization, comma splices, coarse terminology word salad before people sit down and take the effort to really make something into something better. And that brings me to just thinking about rewriting as an impulse that we all should have, whether we're academics or songwriters or just people living our lives. Because what it really is, is recognizing error or recognizing that something could be better and then taking the steps to do that. And whether you're making an online post or writing an opera or who knows what, that's something we all could be better at. So what I'm going to take you to now is take you through my process. So I am both an academic and a songwriter. Uh, so as you see, I've got a guitar here. So I'm going to take you th through that process. Uh, the song title behind me, If We Can't All Be Heroes, Let's All Be Cynics, was a song that I wrote <laughs> was a song that I wrote uh, for my very first musical. I wrote it 20 years ago, if you can believe that. Um, and then the produced version happened 10 years ago. So this, you're gonna hear the produced version uh, from that. And then we'll talk about it a little bit. And then after that, you get to hear another version. So here we go. If we can't all be heroes, let's all be cynics. If we can't all be heroes, let's all be cynics. If we can't all be heroes, let's all be cynics. If we can't all be heroes, let's all be cynics tonight. We know we won't change the world, so we denounce it with words. Sink our teeth in two-day jobs steeped in petty concerns. The world outside passes by while we do menial deeds. Slowly we lose perspective out of touch with wants and needs. Managers, time cards, and smoke breaks are the scope of our days. We're so desperate and detached, set into our ways. 
If we can't all be heroes, let's all be cynics. If we can't all be heroes, let's all be cynics. If we can't all be heroes, let's all be cynics. If we can't all be heroes, let's all be cynics tonight. Identity by putting a name tag on. Stocking isn't my sole purpose, my mind hasn't gone. Whether work gets done or not, I won't lose any sleep. I'll cashier without sinking into the nonsense too deep. Time cards and smoke breaks aren't the scope of my days. I'll keep taking things lightly as long as the job pays. If we can't all be heroes, let's all be cynics tonight. So I knew with this song that I liked it, and I thought it really had a potential, but I knew I needed some distance from it. And that brings me to a really important point. Give yourself enough time to rewrite. Not so much time that you drown in drafts and never finish, but not so little that you hate hearing, reading, or seeing your writing due to shortcuts you took, or maybe laziness here and there. Also, it's really important to hoard everything. <laughs> this is one time when it is okay to do that. Avoid the living document trap. Save multiple versions. Save those little slips of paper. Save all those envelopes that you scribbled everything down on the backs of. It's all important. That way, that sentence you need in draft number three is there when you need it, as opposed to being erased for all eternity. Also, something that just occurred to me before I even got up here is the other thing. I find rewriting an immensely freeing experience. There is nothing so freeing as writing a lyric in a song and knowing that it sucks and going, it's totally fine because I'm going to fix it six months from now. <laughs> so um, let's talk about kind of what I wanted to do with this song and how it got to the newest version. Last year, I started rewriting a whole bunch of songs and putting songs together for a musical theater review of songs of mine. So I wanted to rewrite this for that. Um, one thing is that we had it in the show in the middle of act one when the title and really everything about it always felt to me like an opening number. So, I did some rewrites with that in mind. One thing, you want to establish setting. For me, when I'm listening to a cast recording of a musical, I want to be able to know where it is without having to see any pictures of the stage, just by the opening number. So I did some things to kind of get that going. It's also in kind of a generic third-person omniscient voice, um, sort of, the writer speaking through the character to the audience, let me tell you the themes that the show is about. Mm. So I fixed that and put in some more real-time things where uh, the employees are speaking directly to each other and speaking to customers and saying things that people would actually say. They're also referencing the banal tasks that sometimes are a part of retail. The other thing, going, and going backwards, I love the title, but do we need to hear it 12 times? It loses its effect. So I went back and one, took the refrain, so it's not right at the beginning, kind of giving away the, the hand, and instead put it a little later and had three other lines building up to the title phrase. Uh, there's also a lot of waiting. Uh, for one thing, the song is three minutes and it's basically one person complaining to another person. Nothing happens. 
in theatrical terms, it'd be called a stage weight. And even within the song, there's what I guess we could term micro weights, those little instrumental moments where in the show, the actors had to look really interested in a piece of scenery. <laughs> These things are death on the stage. <laughs> so you can almost hear the audience whipping out the phones and programs. <laughs> so as I said, I added lyrics to the chorus and I had employees say things in real time. So we're going to hear a little bit of this and kind of see what you think. Now, I need you guys to help me out with this. Don't worry, it's your imagination. You won't have to sing or anything. Every time you hear that melody that I stopped to play, I'll be singing it this time. I need you to picture it being sung by the most nefarious store manager you can think of. Maybe it's an actor who's played an MCU or a James Bond villain, whatever you want. But that's what I want you to picture. Because what I did was I added uh, lyrics to that melody that are PA announcements being sung by the store manager that are sort of interrupting everything, which also introduces you to our villain early on, even before he's actually seen. All good things to accomplish in an opening number. Right. And there's going to be a slide change in the middle of it that I think I can pull off. The delivery truck will be late. Staff meeting at nine in the break room. Put your name tag high up on your vest. Keep the drunk away from the mouthwash. No, we don't rule the world. Listen when we speak. No, you can't pay us that way, and there's no sale till next week. Resist the urge to mistreat us while we do menial deeds. And when you complain, just remember the difference between wants and needs. Your corporate dress needs to be dry cleaned. Managers, time cards, and smoke breaks are the scope of our days. So forgive us if we're desperate and can't seem to change our ways. Well, we can't change the world, but we must live in it. So we'll fill up on wit and quips by the minute. Why try to start things? I'll never finish. If we can't all be heroes, let's all be cynics. Lotions face front always on the shelf. We fantasize about bonuses and grabbing the manager's throat. So forgive if I tuned out, just keeping of staying afloat. Even though I'm half asleep, I have many concerns. Teen smokers, perfume thieves, quotas, refunds, and return. Please always pay for your break room food. Better jobs, homework, and hookups are the scope of our days. So forgive us if we're desperate and can't seem to change our way. If, well, we won't change the world, but we must live in it. So we'll fill up on wit and quips by the minute. Why try to start things? I'll never finish. If we can't all be heroes, let's all be cynics. Please don't let couples use the bathroom. If we can't all be heroes, let's all be cynics tonight. So I would love to say that as I was preparing for this, I didn't notice new rewrites, 
but I would be lying. I even see lines on that page that I crossed out that I should have used. But I hope that's the way it's always going to be. I hope that there will always be a need for revisions and there will always be ways I can think of making things better. That brings to mind a final important point. Have someone to tell you when to stop. <laughs> now that could be a significant other or a deadline or an editor or a producer. Whoever it is, have someone to tell you, okay, this is ready to go out into the world now. Now, I would love to tell you that I am a hugely successful Broadway songwriter and therefore the financial and artistic benefits of rewriting are made really obvious. But I'm not there yet. But what I'm hoping is that someone is watching this on the TED website or YouTube in the not too distant future going, hey, you know that Wes Smith who writes those smash Broadway hits? He did a TED talk last year. Super cool. So maybe someone will see this after all that. But the important thing is that writing is its own reward, no matter who consumes it, and rewriting even more so. So whether it's on stage, on film, in print, through a speaker, or online, write well, rewrite better, and make the world a better place with your writing. Live long and prosper. Thank you. Woo!